Welcome back. When I said we're going to save the planet today, I really wasn't joking. And it starts with us, but it's going to be handed over to our children. Today marks the end of Global Climate Change Week. However, the conversation around how we can all contribute to taking our world to a sustainable, resilient and zero carbon future must and will continue. And we're joined in studio by Salri Odi from Green School South Africa to talk about some of the work that they are doing with kids to create eco-activists. And we put it to you guys, and I'm going to reiterate this, to tell us how you are chatting to your kids. Have you spoken to your little ones about climate change, about what we all can do? Is it painting a dire picture? What has their response been? How do you start? When do you start? What age? I'm hoping Salri's going to answer every single one of those <laughs> questions for me because this is your playground. Yeah. You work for the Green School South Africa, which is quite a, a massive thing. Um, I, I've got to ask the bigger questions first before we get into the dynamics of what you do, but it seems like the world is a scary place at the moment. For a, We've got all the tools to process this emotionally, intellectually and otherwise. We've made most of the mistakes, so our generations have. Mm. With young ones, it's a very different prospect. We look at the world now, KZN experiencing floods. South Africa is not exempt from climate change. Mm -hmm. Where are we when you kind of look at that, that line in the sand, if you will, that we cannot move past? How close to that are we? Well, without going to a doomsday clock scenario, I Do think it, we're man. just about two millimeters away from the line. Yeah. It's, it's a very real situation and it's absolutely terrifying if you think about it. And there's a lot of this media out there that our children are actually exposed to and they can see all of these things. And, and it is a very real situation. It's not something we can stop anymore. It's something we have to manage. And, and we've got media with an agenda as well. Unfortunately, yes. any news consumed online has an agenda or is being used to push something else, unfortunately, but the news itself, <laughs> the real stuff. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm glad that you've said that because maybe it is a bit of a doomsday situation mm. and we've got to do something about it. We are fighting this battle on multiple fronts mm. at the moment. E-commerce, um, uh, you know, e-waste rather, a massive kind of front line, if you will, at the moment. How do we approach that from an education perspective? Because we are so technologically reliant, mm. our kids even more so. Yes, they are. So technology is beautiful and powerful, but what do you do with that tool when it is you know, no longer working yeah. and redundant? And what do you do? So um, to make that recycling a real and authentic activity that you actually engage in, and not just a lip service or a greenwashing, yeah. you actually have to go and do your homework. So there's you start small, you start, okay, where am I going to find places that can actually responsibly and ethically dispose of these go and things? process the stuff. Yeah. yeah, so you need to go and do your research. Who in my area or in the bigger town closer to me, if you're in a small town, actually has the, the ability and is registered and certified to do it properly. And once you've got that, then you have to actually accumulate enough of it to make an impact. So that's where you start talking to your friends and to your other schools. Yeah, completely. Well, yeah. The, and then you've created a demand for go. which there is an answer, i.e. Yes. a new product or service by an entrepreneur. And I saw this during lockdown mm. when we couldn't dispose of waste and yeah. all of us suddenly had to process our own. And I've now got like five different uh, you know, organic processes and all these different things. And it was a lot easier and more accessible than I thought. It just required connecting with people. Another area that concerns me greatly is wildlife. And it feels like, well, yes, we are winning in some spaces in terms of perception and a lot that was okay a couple of years ago is not okay anymore which is wonderful there is still a massive impact on wildlife what are the current wildlife stats when you look at the bigger picture how much of wildlife and beautiful creatures like these like the polar bear I get goosebumps even as I say that name because I'm terrified for its future how are they being affected so climate change really affects especially I mean you just had a turtle up there um, if we just look at turtles they have the, the whole um, life cycle surrounds or, or is around our coastal regions. So when you get climate change impacting those regions, it means that our beaches are hotter. Mm -hmm. That means that only females are being born. So it impacts how that generation is going to propagate. It also impacts... So you're saying the yeah. turtles are winning, basically. Well, the women the, they're winning the, the whole... <laughs> I'm not going to go there. But that's crazy, because <laughs> you don't often think about the yeah. knock-on effect in that way. You think, that's okay, that's, you know, the animals are dying, but yeah. what about reproductive cycles? What about food chains? What about space to roam and move? And if you look at wild dogs, I mean, they are temperature sensitive, so they would rather go and hunt during the cooler time of the day. But if the cooler time of the day window becomes smaller, 
and there's less animals to go there because they Packs can't feed anymore. Packs are becoming smaller. Packs are becoming smaller. Their pups aren't surviving, so that knock-on fills in there. So, uh, and I'm loving from a teaching perspective. It's almost awesome that this is such a dynamic issue because there's mm. so many lead-in points that will yeah. excite a child. Mm. Does he love wildlife? Does he love the sea? Does he love turtles? Does he love rhinos? There are exactly. ways that you can get that emotional investment. Yeah. I love that as well. On the flip side of that coin, I, I heard the term being used, ecophobia. Yes. Uh, a global survey depicting that kids are actually being terrified by this mass media, mm. this notion of where our climate is going. Can you fill me in a bit more on that? So it was a survey done by um, a variety of universities, but it was published by Bath. And they basically interviewed 10,000 children from 10 different countries, and they all took part in this. And the questionnaire or the survey was focused around how the children's feel, children feel about climate change and what they feel about government's response to that. Yeah. And the outcome, now these were people, young people between 16 and 25 mm. years old. So they had this helplessness. And the moment there's a helplessness or a lack of tools or a lack of coping mechanisms, you really start to feel that burden of oh, what am I going to live wellness. in one day? Mm. And one day I have to have children and why should I? And then those, that horrible cycle of, of you know, degradation is just like the planets. You know, you've got that whole feeling of I'm going down. And it's important that we actually battle or combat that because you really have to make sure that our youth are still and hopeful. Point. Yeah, and hopeful, because that's it's an emotional battle, it's a yes. physical battle, it's a practical battle. Yeah. Um, but the bottom line is, it's not too late. We might be no. two millimetres away, yeah. but we own those two millimetres. Yeah. They belong to us, yeah. um, not to this problem. I absolutely love this conversation. Sol, thank you so, so much for joining us this morning. We're going to delve a bit deeper into how the Green School South Africa are combating this and changing this mindset, reframing this battle within young people. Absolutely amazing. But again, keep those voice notes coming. How are you having this conversation with your kids about the current climate crisis that we are in? Um, 063 I'll actually remember it at some point. Um, and we will get that WhatsApp line to you now. Oh, there it is on screen. Please send through your WhatsApp voice notes. We'd love to hear from you, especially if you are working in this space. It's my feel good back as we continue our focus on the environment today. Now, South Africa is often referred to as the world's most unequal country on levels, where a large part of the population lives without access to clean and safe water, just as a basic. Now, climate change is a threat to everyone's physical health, but some groups, socially and economically disadvantaged ones, face the greatest risks of all. And we are joined in studio by Gabriel Klaassen from African Climate Alliance to talk about their work of reconciling environmental justice and social justice, a link that I unfortunately think we are not making. And even as I say these words, light bulbs are starting to go <laughs> because it's all one ecosystem, mm -hmm. to be quite honest, to use that term again. Uh, so, Gabriel, thank you for doing thank the work that me. you do <laughs> every day. Uh, but thank you for joining us during a very important time. I mean, as much as we want this to be a, a year-long conversation, mm -hmm. while we've got the opportunity for heightened awareness and people connected, let's use it. Mm. This feels quite political, brother, um, <laughs> uh, which is maybe where it needs to go. Yeah. Because for far too long, climate is there, and then politics is there, and then personal life is here. Nothing is finding itself yeah. here. So please explain to us, as simply as you can, the link between social justice and climate change. So in its essence, in its truest essence, climate justice is social justice, is economic justice. We've heard this before, but what does it actually mean? Mm. I mean, the fact that so many people on the ground experience floods, droughts, at a harder and more affected rate. We've seen in KZN, we've Look seen what's going here, on right, right now, now, this afternoon. Yeah. Um, we, we've acknowledged that, but people don't find the link for some reason. Um, and I think it's intentionally so. The less people are interested in kind of being a part of something, the less action happens, the more uh, yeah. destruction continues. And so a true link is just acknowledging the fact that because of the droughts that we, have fa we are facing, there comes food insecurity, there comes hunger, there comes thirst uh, and more. Uh, issues on the social side as well. So that's how the injustice Which is. is a burden on everyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your, your tax will pay for that burden. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make those links. And it's not to say that we're not getting it right in pockets. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when you've got things like green tax on the financial side, things that make it so much easier to just pay for the problem as opposed to pay find as you a go, sustainable pay as you solution. Yeah, and it's great. Nothing away from what's being done in certain areas again. But then step in your non-profit organization, African Climate Alliance. Mm. 
What do you do? What do you stand for? And how can we help? Yeah, so African Climate Alliance is a youth-led, uh, grassroots movement-based organization across Africa. Uh, and we work and act and advocate for social and economic justice, ecological justice as well. Uh, we believe that the only way we can achieve that is together through an intergenerational movement. And so while it's youth-led, everyone needs to be a part of this, this fight. Uh, we believe that a world can be defined for us, by us. Yeah. Um, it just needs a little bit of vuma, a little bit yeah, of willpower yeah, on the side of it yeah. as well. A bit of action. I think the conversation has shifted. I think it is a lot more commonplace now. I mean, unfortunately, there are the conspiracy theorists balancing it out on Facebook, um, which we will, you know, we're going to have to teach young people to be discerning and yeah. to understand and to make those links. But I love that. We've got to see this common chain throughout history, not just compartmentalize each generation and we'll you <laughs> know, hand, the over the, you know, the, hand over the, yeah, hand over the troubles to the next. All of that being said, lovely idea. How do we get it right? What have been some of the successes for you and how are you getting communities at that base level to buy into this? Because there is a mistrust as well. So I think a big thing is to acknowledge the fact that um, when you go into a community, it can't just be a thing, I'm coming to show you what to do and how you need to run yeah. your things. A community understands what they want and what they need at the end of the day. And a big part of it is just the level of um, knowledge building that does happen when it comes to linking climate and social justice. And so it's not the community's fault that they don't know that a climate issue is a social issue. Sure. Uh, and so it's just kind of helping bridge that gap. And that's why education. through action, ed advocacy, education, you can kind of help build, build that knowledge and bolster that up so that people can act in it. Once people acknowledge the fact that if we tackle climate injustice, if we tackle our heavy reliance on coal-fired power in this country, and we move towards renewable energy, not only are we fixing so many of the issues with our health and our environment, but we're also stopping load shedding. Yeah. We're also stopping a lot of the issues we face like that. I mean, I did the drive between um, the Pilansburg National Park and, and I had an amazing, enlightening game drive in the Pilansburg with a young game driver who was phenomenal, best guy I've ever had. He, had only, he lived less than a kilometer away from the Pilansburg. Oh. He only went in there when he was 21 years old. Okay, so that puts it in perspective. The shift in that road, mm. just seeing now that ownership has been given back to the people, land has been sold at a, a rate that is acceptable, mm. ownership, they are looking after what they own. Now it's a case of an entrepreneur can launch a business starting Wi-Fi, starting renewable energy, starting boreholes. Suddenly you see a complete shift in that mindset. This being said, I need to ask you, as a father of a young man and a young girl who are going to be entering and they're going to be taking over the world, you leave them, so please, but keep doing what you're doing. How do I talk? How do I speak to them and engage in a way that my old brain might not understand? So a big thing is that I think just being honest. Um, young people have access to the internet, young people have access to the world, and so they know what's going there's on. Awareness, yeah. But there's a lot of that climate anxiety that builds up, that worry and that stress. And as a parent, I can only assume, um, based on my parents' reaction to yeah. me in this space, it's just that you don't want your child to fi face that spiral downwardness. You need that hope, as you mentioned. Yeah. And so it's, uh, it's about being honest, it's about showing people that there is a way forward and that it's how we can go forward. It's, it's putting the, the positive before we put the negative. Negative completely, it's, yeah. We want renewable energy, stop coal, rather than just stop coal, this is suffering, we're all going to die, the world is ending. Hold on, yeah. we still have time and we can do it together. Yeah, we were joking, we might be about two millimeters from the line, but, but we own those two, two millimeters. millimeters. Yeah, yeah, trust me, in sports it's an inch, so in <laughs> climate change it's a couple of millimeters, but we can do it. We're gonna keep all of your details up for as long as possible. Please, whenever you're launching anything, mm. doing anything, have more amazing young people like you ready to mobilize, let us know. We will be there to scream this message from the mountaintops while we still have mountains. The African Climate Alliance, absolutely brilliant. A youth-led grassroots organization acting and advocating for Afrocentric climate justice because it is a social issue as well.